What's up, challengers? Welcome to the gym. My name is Gym Leader Geo, and this is the locker room week eight of season four of the GBA. This week, we have a rematch against Magnitude uh, of the Milwaukee Sawsbucks, and Steve is uh, a great guy, and I really like him. Okay, <laughs> let's go uh, into the analysis of the team. So, a big consideration to go for here is what changes has have been made to our rosters since we last met and what knowledge from last matchup is going to carry over into this matchup and so how do you adjust your team accordingly so for me the team i opted to bring was the exact same team as last time. As you can see, I'm not bringing the rain, I'm not bringing Mega Swampert, I'm bringing the same six Pokemon that I brought to our last matchup. Only a few differences, and even though they're so minor, they are significant, and so I'm gonna go over all of them now. So the big thing to note are the changes that happened to the Milwaukee Saws Bucks since I last played against them. So I'll go over their full roster of 11 and then highlight the ones that have changed. Mega Gardevoir, Suicune, Landorus T, Electros, Latios, Arcanine, Ferrothorn, Trawdont, Miltank, Lucario, and Muck. And the main changes to note there are that he no longer has Breloom. I have Breloom. And he no longer has... Uh, he replaced that Breloom with Ferrothorn. And he no longer has Dawn Fan. He now has Lucario. So here's the big things to note. One, he now only has one Defogger, and that's Latios. Two, with the loss of Dawnfan as a Rapid Spinner and the amount of work that a Landorus T puts into my team um, as an offensive set, it's relatively safe to assume that Landorus T is probably going to go offensive again and thus won't be a defensive set. He has the potential to pack coverage for a lot of the Pokemon on my team, and I predict that he will do that. Um, so. Landers T putting in an incredible amount of work uh, against my team. Just by nature, I'm just assuming he's not going to run Stealth Rocks. So for that reason, I predict that Ferrothorn is going to be the only Hazard Setter that he possesses on his team. And for that reason, um, I have to play with coverage to make sure that Ferrothorn never has a safe turn in this game. So for that reason, again, saying for that reason, too many times saying that word those words. Uh, I didn't bring Politoed. The rain gives a lot of my Pokemon a big advantage. Bunny Sore, of course, with hydration and rest is huge, but that's not going to be an important factor for this match because Mega Gardevoir can two-hit KO me, so it doesn't matter that I can get that rest off. It's just not safe for me. Fox appreciates having 100% accurate Hurricanes. He really does. However, Hurricane is not the destructive force against Magnitude's team that it is against a lot of the other teams in this league. So Air Slash is sufficient for me, even though it's a lot weaker. The flinch chance is useful, and almost always I'm going for a fire type attack anyway. The only reasons I wouldn't is if he brings in someone like Arcanine. Um, and even that, like, I mean, it's just... Saying that I shouldn't go for fire type attack because he might have Arcanine, or I guess Latios, is not a reason to go for a flying type attack because by that same logic you could say, well, he might bring in Electros, and if he's, you know, Assault Vest Electros, it's not really going to do much anyway. So for that reason, I didn't think Fox needed it, I didn't think Bunny Sore needed it. I'm not bringing Mega Swampert because one thing I've started to notice is that Mega Swampert is a huge threat that teams need to prepare for and bring grass types for. And that allows me to oftentimes have people overlook the coverage of electric type for Gyarados. Um, I've found that I should only bring both of those in situations where they both put in a devastating amount of work. And Gyarados is only, with a life orb, is only slightly weaker than a Mega Swampert with the added bonus that he can set up better on his own and doesn't require an entire other Pokemon in order to make him more effective. I, I can go for more bulky sets, but at this point in the league, I've sort of noticed it's too easy for people to just tack grass moves on a few things that wall him and then he's useless. So I, I didn't want to do that. Jardos has some switch benefits in, uh, in Intimidate, which I'm going to keep on him 
and I, I just that's why I sort of the thought process that went into not making those significant changes despite the fact that his team has changed so we're gonna go over the six Pokemon I think he's gonna bring first of all Mega Gardevoir is coming that's not even there's not even a question there it's his MVP he does amazing work with it every single week it's a strong Pokemon, and in particular against my team, it's devastating. It can two-hit KO every single one of my Pokemon, and with 100 base speed, it outspeeds most of them too. So Mega Gardevoir is coming. Um, I predict Landorus T is coming again, and Mag can go two ways with this Landorus T. Uh, he can go hyper offensive, choicing it, doing stuff like that, but I don't think he will because. It has the potential for coverage to hit almost everything. You know, it's got Rock Stab to take on Fox and Gyarados. Uh, it can run, we've seen it run Hidden Power Fire to take on Proto. Um, it can run Earthquake is devastating, Knock Off is devastating, U-Turn for Momentum. Uh, thinking about the set, I'm thinking it'll probably end up going some variant of... Bulky Offense probably suits it best. It's, it's 91 speed is very troubling for me because my fastest natural sweeper is Fox, who's base speed 90. So he could go adamant max speed, and the only way to outspeed him is if I went Tim. I mean, he's not going to play that game. Um, I can't one shot him with Fox, and he can one shot me with a uh, Stone Edge. So that matchup is already not in my favor. I don't think he needs to invest in speed. I think he's going to have some nice mixed set where he's uh, a little bulky so he can maybe survive. Something very specific, maybe an Ice Fang from a Gyarados or an Ice Beam from someone. I'm not entirely sure, but that's my prediction on how he's going to do that. He used Landers 2T incredibly well last time, and I'm not going to sleep on it this time. It's very important for me to counter it. So that was a big consideration in my team building, again, my re-team building. Landers T is coming. Suicune's got to come. Um, he walls a majority of my major uh, sweepers, most of which are either Steel, which is Scissor, or Water-type. So I can't find a way to hit him super effective with a stab move. Everyone else is just going to be using coverage outside of Electivire, who is not a safe switch into him because he does get hit very hard by Scald and he uh, Scald Bird and he just takes me out. So Suicune is devastating for my team. I can try and kill him with my special attackers, but my special attackers either don't pack coverage to hit him with a stab. For example, Fox does not have a grass type attack. Or, um, Crocoon kind of sets up bait for Calm Mind. So, Suicune is very devastating, so I'm positive these three are coming. Positive. Now we kind of go into what's next to be brought. Um, and this is where it gets a little confusing. I think he's still on the Ferrothorn game. Uh, he just got Ferrothorn. It is a, a very good, solid defensive typing, and he knows that if I opt to bring the rain, I've just taken away one of his weaknesses. Or taking it down a notch for one of his weaknesses. Um, it's now his primary entry hazard setter if he wants one um, so that he can alleviate that pressure from Landorus T. So I think this is the right move for him. I'm not positive that Ferrothorn is coming. And then after that, I'm pretty sure... No, you know, I'm a lot less sure about these last two, but I think Electros is coming again. He's got great coverage for everything on my team. Electros is probably coming. And I think he'll bring Latios both because he's a very powerful uh, special attacker. He can break through a lot of my defensive walls. Um, one of the unfortunate things about Bunny Soar is that Dragon is a very potent offensive typing. And while Bunny Soar can soak up hits from just about anyone, it can't do it with Dragon and Fairy types. And unfortunately, those are his primary sweepers. So I think he'll see that. I think he'll really put that work in so that I don't have any answers that Bunny Sword becomes less of an option, but Bunny Sword is still a really safe switch in for a lot of his other threats. So I'm I'm happy with thinking that Bunny Sword is still worth it on my team. Things to note, I think he won't bring Crawdont this time. I think he realized it just didn't work out that well against me last time. I was very concerned with it, but then I realized that I wasn't even packing counters for Crawdont. I just happened to have them. You know, Bunny Sword can't get one hit KO'd by any of his attacks, and with the set I ran, he outspeeds him in one shots, and if he doesn't go for Aqua Jet, which does hardly anything to Bunny Sword. Um, I can pick him off with a lot of other Pokemon that would be way faster than him. I have some priority to pick him off, and he, just in general, if he's not going for a non-priority move, 
he is going to get outsped and killed in one hit. So it it I'm realizing that Crawdot probably not. Mill tank, I don't I just don't see what it does to my team. It's not a horrible Pokemon to bring. You know, the, the potential for Sap Sipper to prevent me from getting grass uh, grass type coverage on Suicune it might be useful, but then it just doesn't really do much in and it gives me free switches into potentially other Pokemon that could do a lot to it. Lucario is a potential Pokemon you can bring, a potential, but I don't think he'll bring it, I don't know. And Muck is one of those Pokemon, I don't, I don't see him bringing Muck either. It's, you know, it's not bad against my team. It does have some good moves, but it's kind of, it, it serves a very similar purpose to what Electros does, which is that it kind of hits everything a little hard, and it's kind of defensive, kind of bulky. So really, it's very similar to Electros, except that Electros has better typing and safer switch opportunities. Muck, I don't really see as having that. So, that's what I... This is sort of what I built the team preparing for. That, and then on the side, thinking that Lucario is a possibility because it's new, it's shiny, it's very strong. It's very strong Pokemon. And then, you know, I think that's pretty much it. That Arcanine... Maybe he brings Arcanine... Because, again, it's a good answer to Proto, but there's t he has too much stuff for Proto. Suicune is already a really good switch into Proto. I don't need to worry about that. Arcanine doesn't really do a whole lot to a lot of other Pokemon on my team. If it packs uh, Wild Charge, it can do something to Gyarados to stop it from setting up. But again, it doesn't want to do that because it doesn't want to switch in on a first turn Waterfall and take half its health. So, I just I really don't see those Pokemon coming outside. Of so, these are the seven of the six that I think are most likely. And we'll kind of go on from there. I'll go over the team sets now, and I realize that I've spent a lot of time talking about concept, but that's how you have to design this, because there's no way for me to know the sets he's going to bring. Only for me to know, conceptually, what team works against my team well, and then to try and counter that. Now you can go these counter-counter games, but we're not going to go into that. That's too deep. We're going too deep, guys. We're going too deep. Basically what's happening is there's a big, there's a big ravine here, right? And over here is... Over here's the finish line, right? So that you got like the little finish line flag. Um, let's call that a finish line flag. Let's just not, let's not judge that. That's the finish line, and then you've got like the millions of cheering fans, which is just going to be this one guy holding another flag. That's a flag. Kind of looks like an axe or a hammer, but millions of fans over here, guys. Just honestly, millions, just waiting for the for me to fat pass the finish line, but. We don't want to go too deep into the mind games. Down here, this is just a just a pit of mind game juice. Just down here. This is mind game juice right here. Mind game. That's a horrible G. Let's fix that. Juice. That's mind game juice, guys. So you don't want to go into the mind game juice. Um, that might be where like Crawdont is hiding, where like he's got this crazy Crawdont set and he sweeps my entire team. Shut up, Magnitude. Stop talking to me. I'm trying to talk about not falling into your mind juice. We've got up here, yeah, like up here we've got like Proto, and he's like, like here with his little scissor claws, and he's like, hey, what's up? And he's got like that little slick back hair that kind of makes him look like, you know, like or something. That was racist. I'm going to bleep that. <laughs> um... But Scissor doesn't want to jump into this pool of mind juice where he like loses the Pokemon he's supposed to beat. Stop it! Um, he just wants to go this way for the victory. So that's what's happening here. We're not going too deep into the mind being juice. We are going to go over my team here. Two Chains is joining us once again. He is running a timid 180 speed uh, with max special attack and some HP investment. Very similar set to what he had last time. His set here is really to... Uh, max the rest in HP and special attack, or max special attack and put the rest in HP. It gives him a little bit of bulk, and uh, the main move switches you've seen here is that that used to be Psych Up, and now what it is is Hidden Power Fire. Hidden Power Fire, two hit KOs, Ferrothorn, making Ferrothorn not safe against two chains anymore. So he can still probably get uh, a Rocks off or maybe a Leech Seed or something, but it's not a safe switch in for him anymore. And if he comes in on an attack like a Psy Shock or something, he'll take a little bit of damage and then two hidden power fires will probably still kill him anyway. So that's uh, that's my option with two chains there. Uh, the next option we have here, we're bringing Proto back. And guys, 
Tell me to stop bringing it. I'm not going to. Choice Ben, Bullet Punch, U Turn, Superpower, Defog. I was considering running Pursuit over Superpower, but then I realized that's pretty much only for Latios, and he might not even bring Latios. He didn't bring it last time. Uh, I think he will bring it this time, but it doesn't really even matter. Um, Superpower over Brick Break because I don't see any real um, screen setters on his team, and I don't think he's going to be looking to do that against my team. Anyway, Superpower provides me with options to hit Super Effective. Ferrothorn. Lucario and Miltank, all of whom are either one hit KO'd or very damn close by it. Uh, U turn is the super effective move of choice against Latios uh, and Crawdont and provides me with some safe switch incentive. I'm running max speed, max attack here because it will outspeed bulky varieties of several of his Pokemon that might otherwise not. I might otherwise not outspeed. It gives me. Yeah, and and you know, at this point, I feel like Proto, he either switches in on an attack that's not going to hit him super effective, and he would die next turn anyway if he doesn't get a bullet punch off, or someone's going to pack that fire move, and it doesn't matter. Without the rain, it's going to one-shot me. So I realized that I didn't need the HP investment on Proto for this matchup. Uh, he's running Defog just in case shit hits the fan. It might end up being useful in a situation where maybe Gardevoir is dead. I mean, really, that's Scizor's job, is kill Gardevoir. I need Scizor around to kill Gardevoir. If Gardevoir lives and Scizor goes down, just looking at my team, with Gardevoir staying in, if Scizor goes down, I think, I mean, I don't know. I might have options. I'll have to assess that at, at a later date, though. Um, I put the rest into defense, because why not? We've got Gyarados here. Um, I didn't nickname him GLaDOS. I should change that. I'm not going to change that. We're going <laughs> to... This set is a little different than the set I used last time. He ran Lumberry to prevent the Scald Burn. This time I'm running Life Orb. And the reason is that Gyarados... He doesn't have a huge option to sweep outside of Suicune going down. And Magnitude plays in a manner that sometimes he leans on crutches. However, he has... Multiple crutches against me. He could lean on the fact that Mega Gardevoir could come in a lot against my team and do a lot of work. He's got a nice uh, U-turn opportunity to do that with, with Landorus to sort of scout me and then bring in that Gardevoir. He's got a lot of really slow other threats that can sort of cripple me and then bring in Gardevoir. Gardevoir is a potential one. Another one is his Suicune. Because it defends well against most of my Pokemon, he might feel like it's a good idea to bring it in a lot. That said, I want to be able to hit it really hard once with like earthquakes and stuff like that outside of the chance that Dragon Dance is really there to set up a potential sweep uh, late game. A lot of the time I sort of use Gyara as a very mid game player because of Intimidate. It's a safe switch into a lot of Pokemon that might be getting hit hard by other moves. Uh, it's a, another ground immunity which is useful. So I think the Lumberry was really only to prevent me from getting Scald Burned by Suicune, but outside of me managing to get up two Dragon Dances and two hit KOing it with Earthquake, which I can do, outside of that, I, I you know, I, it just feels, it feels risky for me to, to lose that power just for that purpose. So Gyarados is here. I was considering really giving Danza a throwback by packing uh, Flamethrower, or, Fire Blast on this guy for Ferrothorn. However, at, at might as well just go for a Dragon Dance against him because at plus one Earthquake is a two-hit KO anyway. So that's probably the better move for me. Remix is making his return and is once again leftovers, and the reason for that is there is the potential. Now I assessed the team. I said that I didn't think Arcane Iron was being brought, but he does have. A very strong Firewater Grass Core in Ferrothorn, Suicune, and Arcanine. Ditto can switch in on all of those guys, and they're not good against themselves. So that gives me a chance to rack up Leftovers Recovery. Other things worthy of note. Uh, as you can see here by my EV, or my IVs, I am running Hidden Power Ice so that I can... Another thing that Ditto does is he's a safe switch into Landorus. Huge, huge thing for me. Um, I can also have Gyarados be a safe switch into Landorus. The problem there is that if Gyarados switches into Landorus on a U-turn, then a Gyarados counter comes out and, uh, you know, I, I'm forced to switch again. 
oftentimes that could end up being someone like a guard of war and that puts me in a bad position but remix on the other hand being a landorus is great i'm super happy to be a landorus but if that landorus if i switch on that landorus and i detect that he has a hidden power i'm scouting for the hidden power to see whether or not scissors dane is in danger against him if he does have hidden power and he opts to stay in and I get an outspeed if he's going for a U-turn or something and I hit him with a hidden power ice, I can almost one-shot him. Doesn't one-shot him, but I can almost do it. So that's why I'm running that particular set up here. It also keeps HP at 100, which is the only stat that matters, or at 31. That's the only stat that really matters for Ditto, so I'm happy with this set. Ditto needs to be my safe switch into his walls so that his walls don't whittle me down too much. Bunny Sword is returning, and he's not Assault Vest this time. The reason for that is Mega Gardevoir at modest full investment won't one-hit KO Bunny Oh, actually, he might, given my HP investment. No, I think I calc this already. I don't really remember. I'm not going to do it again, but uh, I have the speed investment that I have so that I outspeed Suicune. I have the H uh, the rest in special attack so that I can pop off some high damage. Bunny Sword plays as a bulky sweeper in this format because people will have answers for it. They will know I have Bunny Soul and they will have answers for it. Um, I didn't want to put anything in a special defensive investment or defensive investment because he's got threats that can hit me really hard on the special side, such as Latios and Mega Gardevoir's Hyper Voice. He's also got a lot of Psy Shock opportunity, both again in Gardevoir and Latios. Other than that, his special attackers, I just wall the crap out of. So I don't need the Assault Vest. If anything, Leftovers is going to result in it being even harder for them to take me down. Suicune, for example, super safe switch into a Suicune Scald. The Ice Beam is still not going to do enough to really hurt me, and I can either kill him with Thunderbolt or uh, start playing some other shenanigans there, predict his switch into something that can take a Thunderbolt like a Landorus and just hit him with an Ice Beam. So... This is the set I'm going for Bunny Sword. I'm going Sap Sipper again. I really didn't want to um, because I thought Gooey might have been useful against certain Pokemon. Then I looked into it and I was like, it really only against Lucario, who... I gotta be honest, I just, I'm not that worried about Lucario. I have options in my Intimidate Gyarados who will eat up Bullet Punches, his Steel-type stab, and his Fighting-type stab. Gyarados is a really good switch into Lucario. Um, and I can sort of work around that afterwards. Uh, his, he's got speed, but, you know, he might be fearing the Breloom, so I also have the priority there. I just There's options for that, so I'm not too worried about that. I think this is going to work out well for me. I don't need Gooey. That's pretty much the only Pokemon that would have been useful against anyway, since Landorus's moves either don't make contact or he's switching out with a U-turn. So... I'm happy with this set for him. I think Sap Sipper is the right move in case... It just makes me a really good switch into Ferrothorn. And I can take him out with Flamethrower, which I'm not packing this coverage. Big thing you'll see here, no Dragon Stab. Why is that? Because Mega Gardevoir cannot have a free switch in. Period. Even if it means dropping something that would potentially be a 2-hit KO from Bunny Sore down to only a 3-hit KO, I do not care. Mega Gardevoir will not run away with this game. I have to... That's That needs to be my number one thing. Gardevoir and Landorus T both are very big threats to me. I cannot let them run away, and so I'm not giving them a free switch in opportunity. I'm not packing dragon coverage. I'm packing coverage for everything else. I have a super effective hit for Mega Gardevoir in that. I have super effective against um, Suicune and also Suicune and uh, Crawdont in Thunderbolt. Ice Beam is coverage for Landorus and Latios. And then Flamethrower's coverage for Ferrothorn and Lucario. Um, so that's the set I'm bringing there. Fox is my last switch in, and I've switched him to Choice Scarf. I was considering Choice Specs. And you know, <sighs> Choice Specs Overheat has a chance to one shot a Mega Gardevoir. However, the reason I went with a Scarf here is that I realized Fox can switch in on Gardevoir, and it's a three hit KO Hyper Voice. Now, it's a two-hit KO if he goes Hyper Voice, Psy Shock. But there's there's things to note here. He might not have Psy Shock. Psy Shock is it's good, but um, yeah, you know, he might not have it. That's that's all the thing. Like he probably will. It's usually the best coverage move to go alongside a Hyper Voice, but he might not have it, and that would make Fox really good. But more importantly, if I do switch in on him and he does have Psy Shock and he will two-hit KO me. I need to be able to get some damage off. And a Choice Scarfed Overheat will do... Like... What do I have? Yeah, like 60 to 75% or something like that to um, 
a slightly bulky guard of which is a set I predict he will be running. So, um, as you can see, I'm running Air Slash, Will O Wisp, U Turn. The reason I'm running Will O Wisp is that any of my other coverage moves are just completely pointless. Uh, between Overheat and Air Slash, every single mod on his team is hit harder than any coverage move I could put there. There's nothing I can put there that would do better than choosing Overheat or Air Slash against any of his threats. Will O Wisp is some weird situation it might be useful. I could have put Defog there, but I just I'm not going to because if the rocks are up, I'm Fox switching in is gonna be a let's get one big hard hitting move off rather than getting Defog off because no one else really cares about the rocks that much. Maybe go there's a little bit. But that's why I didn't go for Defog. U-turn is there in case I want to get a fast U-turn off early in the game. Fox becomes a lead option for me, so that's all all like all good positive options for me there. Willow, it's I mean I'm I'm not gonna lie, it's a bit of a filler move, but there is a chance that I can use it to my advantage, and I have done so in the past. For example, when I tried to get that Willow off against um against Kyurum B. Um, when I played against the Pelippers, and I ended up getting that extra coverage or that extra burn coverage against the uh, extra burn damage against uh, Raikou in the in the process so that's my full team guys i spent a long time talking about this to just point out that it's the same team but i think it's the mindset it's how you're going to use things knowing that this rematch is happening and the big thing here is that the pokemon that i have that are counters to some pokemon in the past matchup now need to be viewed a little bit differently because of how i need to do things for example fox before was just kind of like pump out some damage on everything pokemon now he is Switching to Gardevoir, either force switch or get some massive damage on that Gardevoir. Um, so Fox is now different. He's a little bit of a, a, a Gardevoir cushion outside of Proto. Because if Gardevoir comes in early, Proto's got to come in and he's got to get those bullet punches off. And that's just going to be dangerous because I know he's packing the Hidden Power Fire. And if I... I don't know. It's just... It's going to be so risky to know how to go against this. You know what I mean? Um, Remix in the past was kind of like waiting for Don Fan to come in to be Don Fan and uh, try and win the, the stones, the, the, the rocks game. Now he's going to be a little bit more of a scout. Um, he's an anti-landerous. I need to preserve him to be that way. And uh, he's also kind of a check to a lot of Pokemon that are otherwise have a, I have a hard time predicting a safe switch in situation for. So he's important there. Two changes for coverage. Uh, which is, he kind of was last time, but more important than that, last time he was a Suicune counter. He's no longer a Suicune counter, he's just there for coverage for everything. I need someone that can be a pretty good switch in any scenario. And uh, in his current set, with the current bulk he has, basically no one can one-shot him. So if he can get one attack off, off a safe switch in, he's a good answer for me against Pokemon like Mega Gardevoir again. Like I can sacrifice a Pokemon, bring in two chains, and potentially get a kill off or something like that. So the the mindset has changed. Gyarados' mindset is now much more like like one, two, and then get out of there. It's not so much stay in and set up and sweep like it has been in previous weeks. However, I have that option. Um, and you know, sometimes that just works well for Gyarados. He's very dangerous if he gets a couple of dragon dances off and you really gotta not give him that safe switch in opportunity so this is my team guys let me know what you would have done differently um would you guys have brought the rain i don't know please let me know in the comment section down below that's uh good luck to me good luck to mag this week uh mag's uh, had a really good couple of weeks he's got some wins under his belt now and he's actually still chasing that playoff position also it's not out yet uh, I am also doing so. I'm curious to see what the other guys have had this week, but I got to go up against Magnitude right now. So as always, my name is Jim Leader Geo. You guys are the challengers. Thanks for stopping by and I'll see you guys next time.